the adulterous woman passage is a very, very difficult passage. And the reason why is because no one, uh, I would say that most of scholarship would agree that it's not original. Um, you don't see it in, it's not even fixed to a specific book. Uh, later manuscripts, they try to stuff it in different places. At one point, it's at the end of Luke. Uh, it's uh, needless to say, it seems as though it's a late edition. And uh, most uh, textual critics would say that this is not a part of an original manuscript. I agree. I don't actually think it's part of part of scripture. However, uh, that's not a good answer um, for a lot of people who do who do believe that it's scripture. And not only that, but Dr. Wallace, who we were talking about earlier, has made some really good points. You can't, uh, you can't, you know, pe- preachers love to preach on on this passage of scripture. So you can't, you can't just throw it out. Um, no one would, no one would uh, allow that. If if a Bible came out that didn't have the adulterous woman story in it, uh, then what would we do, right? Uh, pe- people would just would not buy that Bible, I don't think. Uh, so th- that's not the point. Let's pretend for a few seconds. And, and Dr. Wallace, once again, I think that he, uh, in his textual criticism, I think he actually touches on this specific passage. Was the story original? Probably not in the form that we have it now. Was there some... Uh, was there some story that probably was circulated ab- about something going on like this? Yes, probably. Was it actually an adulterous woman? Who knows? Uh, we don't know what the sin was, but there was probably some sin in, uh, that somebody committed. They brought somebody to Yeshua. And this is uh, uh, probably a very famous and common story that uh, ended up, uh, you know, uh, as Dr. Wallace does say, on the cutting room floor. Uh, in other words, uh, they they decided not to put it in, and so many people kind of thought it should go in that uh, it ended up back in there, uh, in in some form. Okay, so all that aside, we, let's just let's just pretend for a few seconds that the adulterous woman story that we have in our English Bibles today is uh, is original, and it is the uh, it, it, it it's in the form that it was originally written by one of the the authors of the, of the synoptics or or John or the gospels in general let's pretend that for a few seconds even if that's the case there's multiple problems going on with this story and not problems in terms of things we can't deal with but problems in terms of it's obvious that if this story is true that they are attempting to peg Yeshua they're trying to corner him somehow right uh, first of all they bring a woman who was caught in adultery where's the man why wouldn't they bring the man to? And I think that uh, assuming the story is original and true, Yeshua points this out right away. Right? You who you who are without guilt, cast the first stone. In other words, it seems as though they're trying to lynch this lady, uh, but th- but they've let the man go. Where are the you know who are the witnesses? Who caught? this woman in, in the act where, you know, it doesn't seem as though they've put forth witnesses beyond this. Yeshua was not a judge, right? He's not a, he's not an acting priest in the temple. He does. Uh, to me, it doesn't seem as though he has the authority to uh, dish out a death sentence to this lady. Right. Um, so there's multiple things going on here and it seems like uh, assuming this story is true. It's, yeah. It's in the same vein of, uh, should we pay taxes to Caesar or not? Yeah, exactly. Or, uh, yeah, d- different things where they're trying to stage. Uh, they're doing uh, setting a stage to try to to catch him or something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I I think the main point is that uh, you know they don't they didn't bring a man that she would have been caught with. Uh, and so he certainly finds it suspicious and, uh, he replies correctly. I, the, the brilliance of this story is that I, I do think that there is some truth in it. You know, there was something that, that happened like this and Yeshua's response is very much kind of almost what we've come to expect of his response. Right. Um, I, I, I understand Robert in the, in the, uh, chat room says my take on this is that Jesus uses the Torah to show mercy. So can charges be brought without two witnesses? No, uh, charges cannot be brought without two witnesses. And that's the point they, we don't see any witnesses here and we don't see, we don't, we don't see the other part of the adultery. If you're going to bring somebody to, uh, to be capitally punished for adultery, bring both of them, right? 
Um, I, I agree that uh, that certainly the story is to show mercy, right, uh, in some ways. And, but... and to confront the accusers with the gravity by, by telling them to, to throw stones. Yeah. There, he's forcing them to connect their mob mentality. Uh, maybe you know, we're gonna we're gonna find justice. We're gonna catch Yeshua with the very fact of, okay, then are you ready to take the life yourself? And in the context of reminding them, uh, are they guilty of sin themselves? So it, it it's a powerful story, no question about it. <music> 